With each week, Eli Tomac not only moves up the AMA Supercross all-time winless charts, but also simultaneously resets the bar on what age and durability in Monster Energy Supercross can look like. After all, Eli is already the oldest AMA Supercross champion and is still working on another title. He's also the first father to ever win an AMA Supercross championship, and he has five wins now past his 30th birthday while racing other riders who are at or near that 30th birthday milestone. And these are riders that Tomac has been battling his entire life, like Jason Anderson and Justin Barsha, or Ken Roxon, who has been challenging Eli for wins and titles ever since he moved to America a decade ago. And there's more familiarity in the more recent foe of Cooper Webb, who has taken two titles in the same amount of time that Tomac has won his, and once again challenged Tomac for a win at Daytona just like he did last year. Yes, there's an air of familiarity to the 450 proceedings. The only person to add to the mix is Chase Sexton, who's significantly younger than Tomac, and took him down to the wire in Pro Motocross. But even still, for Sexton, the story is often very good, very fast, but can't quite consistently break through against the veteran types like Tomac and Webb. So the real theme of the 450 racing this year has been that of the familiar. But there recently has been some fresh blood added to the class, kind of unexpectedly. First comes the addition of Justin Cooper to the 450 division, courtesy of his long-running team, Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing. Now, Cooper is not eligible to race the 250 Supercross class anymore. He was given one year to defend his title after winning it in 2021. And even though he was unable to line up with injury, the AMA held the line in the rulebook and said one year to defend, good or not, and you're out. Cooper has signed a deal to focus on 250 motocross this year and win that 250 national title outdoors that has eluded him for years. But the team did give him the option to race some 450 Supercross races. In fact, in talking to them, he could have raced as many as he wanted, even 17. But Cooper is trying to keep his eye on both staying ready and in race shape, yet also not overdoing it and taking too many risks before the 250 motocross campaign. So here has been Cooper at a mid-season stretch of just five races. And the finishes have been good. 7, 7, 10, 9, 6. With Daytona being the best yet, Cooper even went through an experienced and well-established pack of riders, including Ken Roxon and Aaron Plessinger, and was even catching and challenging Jason Anderson for fifth down the stretch. And this is from a man who admitted his number one goal is to just not get hurt in these races. But even knowing that, it shouldn't be a surprise to see Cooper starting to mix it up with the established 450 pack. After all, ever since Cooper turned pro, he's been a rock solid threat to podium or win nearly every 250 race or title he has entered. So why not expect similar success as he begins to move to the 450 class? Well, it doesn't hurt when Cooper chooses not to line up for a full rookie season and is not at Anaheim 1, the most hyped and focused on race of the year. But that is by design. When we talked to Cooper a couple of weeks ago at Oakland, he said taking the pressure off and not racing at the beginning of the season and entering when hype and nerves would be lower was part of his plan. And now he plans on exiting the 450 class just as quietly as he entered it. He's done after Daytona. He said, probably gonna leave it at that in an interview with our Mitch Kendra. This was the plan all along. Just get my feet wet and run with these guys and see what the class is all about, learn the tracks and how they get and how everyone races. So I think we accomplished that. We've had a bunch of good rides battling with the guys. Time to get ready for outdoors. Yep, there will be new blood up front in the 450 class soon, but more likely next year for Cooper. Then there's RJ Hampshire, who jumped into the class this weekend for the very first time in his career. Now this is also a curious choice because Hampshire is still a contender in the 250 West region, running second in points, and had just suffered massive injuries and some crashes at the Anaheim 2 Triple Crown. And he was able to crawl from the hospital to the podium to preserve his title hopes and still took the risk of racing a 450 anyway. He credits team member Sean Murphy for helping go to bat for him behind the scenes, team manager Nate Ramsey, and of course the sponsors who decided to see the value in this program. And boy, did Hampshire deliver with a scintillating heat race win in front of his home state Florida fans, topping none other than Cooper Webb to get it done. In the main event, the focus was a little different. Hampshire did not want to take any risks that could potentially hurt him and his 250 championship hopes, and he didn't want to get in the way of anyone that's actually battling for points in the 450 division. Said Hampshire about his main event, I was very respectful of the guys that are in the points. I was kind of giving it to them a little bit, and then whenever I did that, two guys got me, and I was like, all right, regroup. Had Ken Roxon on me. I'm like, all right, it's kind of a big deal here. 
He came over a bit and I had the inside and I was like, I'm not holding him up, let him go. So I checked him a bit there, he got me. But still, Hampshire could not stop smiling after that heat race win and what the potential he just showed on a 450 could do for his career. Both Cooper and Hampshire will be shopping for new deals in 2024, though Hampshire said he's already negotiating to return to the Rockstar Husqvarna team. It doesn't matter. Showing potential in the premier class is key, and now they've both done it. Because after all, even though Tomac, Anderson, Barsha, Roxon, and the rest have been racing each other for what seems like forever, they can't actually do it forever, and New Blood could be headed full-time into the 450 class before long. It's interesting to note, though, that Cooper is 25 and Hampshire 27. Even the average age of rookies is moving up this year when you consider riders like Christian Craig and Colt Nichols going to the gate as well. It's just the trend for the sport. Hampshire and Cooper are just glad to be part of that mix. 